I just look at this. Oh, okay, cool. Um, okay. My name is Guadalupe Rosales. I grew up in East LA and I'm an LA based artist. And I also run two platforms on Instagram. One is Veteranas and Rucas and the other one is Map Points. In early 2000s, I moved to New York. And this is after my, my cousin had been murdered. And there was also like a lot of uh, violence, you know, growing up in East LA. So I moved to New York. Um, not knowing anyone and I ended up staying there for 15 years. I had just turned 20 when I moved and I pretty much became an adult in New York and I started missing and feeling really nostalgic about my upbringings and growing up in East LA. So then I started using the internet to do like research on LA culture. There was something that felt really off to me, like history wasn't being told an accurate way, very like cliched. The lower writer, the, the cholas and this and that. And then also like we were being portrayed in a certain way in movies and media. I ended up moving back to LA in 2016. And then I started having these conversations with people like face to face. So then, you know, like I started this digital archive on Instagram and people are also donating physical materials, which means that people are going back to their storage or to the garage or under their beds because they're like, you know, I can I can donate this stuff to, to Guadalupe and she can take care of it. I have some like street beat magazines. I have like the full collection of this magazine that have flyers from like 1986 actually, from the cha-cha time, you know, there was like the cha-cha scene before the party crew scene. These underground parties were created because we were finding like a sense of belonging, something that was new, something that was representing us. Something that people were experiencing, especially men, is that the clubs or like venues, they were like, well, if you have a shaved head, you're not allowed to come in. If you're not wearing like dress shoes, you can't come in. They're policing you, the way you dress, you must be a criminal. That was already like a way of protesting. Going out, you know, creating party crews with people that I grew up with, self-organizing, self-promoting, self-like everything. Unidad was there. I grew up with it, you know, like it starts from home. My mom was really involved in like protesting and activism. She was pregnant. She like woke us up and she was like, all right, Andres, we're gonna go to a, go to a march. That was my life, you know? I would consider the work that I do beyond an inspiration. It's, um, it's this urgency, it's something that needs care. Our stories are also materials that need to exist for the future. It's funny because I posted a photo a few weeks ago of a group of women, I think they were at a car show. Some guy was like, I bet you they're all uh, grandmas now. And I was like, and my response was like, okay, well, what if they were, right? Like their mothers, grandmothers, whatever. Like, but imagine if our own grandmothers told us what they did as teenagers. There's also something that happens where there's like shaming, you know? Thinking that hanging out, having like, let's say, if you see a group of five kids walking down the street, the cops will stop them. Cause like, why are you hanging? What, what's this group? What the work is doing and how it's gonna teach others and like generations in the future is that this is a form of us telling our story and that we need to stop criminalizing our own people. What I've noticed and what I really appreciate is that a lot of like young folks are really vocal. They're educating a lot of us. Just because they're young doesn't mean that we can't learn from them. You know, I was here for the 1992 uh, uprising and there's a lot of similarities. For me to do the work that I'm doing is to learn about those, those moments, you know, to go back in time, to bring that to like our present moment and prepare. There's a lot of like archives too, you know, like, like black archives or Afro-Latino archives. So then we started to break down what Latino or Latinx means, which is also like really beautiful. You know, like it's, it's really complex. It's not just like Latinos only look a certain way, like this way. We have these platforms, you know, we have technology, we have the internet, we have social media, and then you have brands like Foot Locker as platforms to start these conversations, to share stories. Something that I want to see is more spaces for black and brown, 
the work that is happy, happening digitally is still needs to happen physically. So we can't forget to come back to the physical. We need to have our own community spaces and our, our own libraries, our own representations. Documentation is almost like, like something did happen. Like this is proof that we exist. I want to inspire people to think about self-representation and self-preservation. Uh, that was something that I learned through the work that I'm doing. It wasn't something that was taught. I just found like a lot of pleasure and a lot of value in the work that I do. What I really enjoy the most is staying connected with, um, with the people that I, that I talk to and who I meet on Instagram. Because I almost feel like the work that I do on, on these platforms, it's almost like therapeutic. The way I see it is like we're, we're like this constellation, you know, and we're all connected in some way. We're all sharing stories. And because we're doing that, it's almost like this beautiful radical movement that we're part of. And we're definitely shifting narratives because of that. And I want people to continue to feel inspired by that.